Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this section of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, it's, it's exciting now. Hey, we, the gates are open. They're open. We've got a national debate getting ready to come up. And hopefully we're going to fix it a bit and give it a little enthusiasm. But if we can possibly get a couple of more candidates on there and talk a little bit about uh, issues. And uh, I'm talking about the possibility of uh, the Libertarian Party and the Green Party being part of the debate come September. That's big news right now. Big news, folks. Because of, in all due respect, of the four different groups, you know, there's only one group, as far as I'm concerned, that really was out there in the mix. There were two former governors that are running in the Libertarian Party, both president and vice president. They're very impressive, very, very impressive aspect of it. But the whole idea is that it's about the issues. And hopefully, if they're in a part of that a part of that group, if you will, in terms of the debate, maybe we might get the media then to start focusing on the issues. Because those libertarian guys, they really, really understand what the issues are because they were out there with the troops, okay? But anyway, I thought we, I'd share that with you on the front line, but we got a very exciting show today, and then we're going to bring it on locally. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening uh, with the Libertarian Party from the standpoint of Oregon, Oregon, and then we're going to bring it on down to the state level, and we've got Scott, happen, happen to be the legislative guru down there. He knows it all, okay? He's written several books already, and he's really out there very involved. And then I got my local pal, you, you've seen him before, uh, I, I call him the golden, the golden boy. There you go. I remember he, he threw out some gold. We ran for office at the same time, in fact. We did? Yeah, we ran for office the same time around. I was running against Earl DePearl, you know, and, and I think you were running for which one? You was running? I was running for Supreme Court. Supreme Court. And it was great. He pulled out the gold, and they didn't know what to do down at the legislature. Now, then, it's, it's Secretary of State, right? Did, did you I've never run for that. I've, I've run for Attorney General two times. I've run for uh, Supreme Court judge and right. Circuit Court judge. Right. And uh, senator, yeah. U.S. senator. Bottom line, he's been involved, almost like myself. You know, we're, we're basically very much involved because it's about the issue. You know, sometimes you can lose by winning. The fact of the matter is, we stirred it enough to get the issues on the table, so it made them far better candidates, right? And the results were good. Well, okay. <laughs> All right, good. Well, anyway, folks, let's All get down. All problems are solved now. How you got, let's get down to the show again. As to those vets, hey guys, hey, it's really working now. It's very important that you get involved, but more so, you need to get your card. You need to get your veterans card. And I would encourage the family members, if you're familiar with vets, it's tough to get to them, to get, to get down to the VA aspect of it. But please, try to support them as much as you possibly can. It's very, very important. Many of these guys are dying off, suicide, uh, alcohol. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. They need your support. Again, thanks for serving, guys. Okay, with that, let's just jump right up in there. Okay, we got Drew. Drew, you got the button on. You got Gary Johnson for president aspect of it. So how's he doing in Oregon? And give us a little background real quick, like. It's a really interesting campaign developing as far as Oregon, is stand, uh, er, Oregon standpoint is. We've been elevated in the, in the national battleground priority uh, from not all that high to second. Uh, the campaign is now looking very seriously at Oregon because it's, it's identified that Oregons are a whole lot more libertarian than they give themselves credit for. Uh, the idea of you know, exercising your civil liberties and using those liberties, turning them into a job and then networking those jobs into a freed market is very much part of Gary's economic mm -hmm. platform that's very real here. You see that with the farmers markets, the emerging marijuana industry, uh, all aspects where we, the, the food carts, there's so many aspects we try to be really friendly to entrepreneurs and small business here in Oregon. That's becoming a really big eye catcher for the national campaign. Uh, we also have a booth in the Oregon State Fair. We got a lot of our friends rocking the Gary Johnson t-shirts, mm -hmm. going out and talking to folks who are just, they feel their intelligence has been insulted mm -hmm. by So what kind of choices. response are you getting in, as far as getting these guys in the, these, these guys warm. in the, in the It's a lot warmer than I was initially okay. thinking. I was okay. expecting, okay. you know, having to dodge and weave the occasional tomato or something like that, but the people have been fantastic. Okay. Uh, most of our earlier efforts centered around the cannabis industry because we were greeted very warmly into those type of venues and uh, thanks to everybody who, who helped donate and helped yeah. towards that cool. effort. But at the local fair, you know, where you have a more uh, mainstream appeal, still a lot of support for Gary. Uh, even the people that didn't necessarily espouse to want to vote that way or they're going to stick with their okay. red team. Or but, what about, team but what about that 15? That's the goal, you know, that's the magic number. 
Have you guys have they achieved that goal yet? They what, have not achieved the goal what yet. What does it look like? What, what kind of numbers are you looking at? I believe right now we're trending up towards in the region of 13% between the the various polls that we're going to need to poll in, and uh, and we're gaining a lot of traction more rapidly. We're kind of transitioning from that uh, exponential growth into a viral growth as people become more and more aware as the uh, ra radio okay. so what, well, what does that mean can you on. can you share with the public the, the individuals who are going to be voting they're going to probably be registering come october and really the bulk bulk of them for that matter and the idea is that you know you got the democrats you got the republican aspect of it but the fact of the matter is um, this that's going to be a very important debate what does that mean uh, to the debate by bringing these two individuals in both the libertarian party well libertarian party these guys are, are, the, are the green party well, what does I, that mean I think to that the would vote? be very good for the debates as a, you know, it would improve the whole tenor of the debates because as Gary Johnson starts to gain more traction, it's forcing his opponents to assume more moderate views rather than sticking with the typical partisan positions. And we all know that partisanship is just simply the pre-intention for non-cooperation. Okay. Okay. And when you have a moderate sitting there in the middle saying, hey guys, come together from both sides, we can figure this out, it bodes really well to stand in your old position and keep, just keep throwing the same, you know, tomatoes that okay. I was talking about earlier. Okay. So well, let's, let's bring these guys in. I'm, I'm not trying to cut you up, but I'm going to bring these other guys in. Any comments, guys? What are you hearing from your perspective? What about down at the legislature? You anything out there in, in your running around knocking on doors, Scott? No, I've, I've not been involved at that level okay. at this okay. point. I mean, I'm largely just doing official legislative duties we have the department of energy oversight committee meeting tomorrow we're still trying to get down to the bottom of the business energy tax credit fiasco yeah, and everything yeah. that happened there and uh, defining a future of what that agency looks like or if we even need it in the first place mm -hmm. uh, so that's what's going on there in terms of the presidential race um oregon's one of these kind of wild cards you know it, it we've seen cycle after cycle where the rest of the nation goes this way, but you know, our state motto is she flies with her own wings. And I think that's very much true. And like he was mentioning, uh, people have taken this approach, particularly East Coast consultants, because every so often in the Republican Party, we get these folks from the East Coast who think they're going to be the ones to turn Oregon red. Uh, but they don't understand that libertarian streak that a lot of Oregonians have. You know, there's issues like water fluoridation, for example, where you have libertarian Republicans and Democrats, you know, folks that are liberal, coming together on something. That doesn't happen that way in other mm -hmm. states. Mm -hmm. So it definitely uh, creates a different dynamic in, in this state than you see in other states. Now, libertarians are very high on marijuana. How do you, how do you think that fits in, in, in the game? <laughs> that could be taken as a double entendre. <clears throat> Well, that, that was one of the things that happened with this last election cycle, right? 2014, you saw this huge red wave uh, nationally, but not in Oregon. And you say, well, what was the difference? One of them was the fact that we had the marijuana legalization measure on the ballot, and that did drive some of the turnout accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, as far as libertarians go and the libertarian philosophy, that, that's in lockstep. So nationally on that issue, I think they're gaining ground. Obviously, the federal government had the chance to reclassify that substance, decided not to, and it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I think the longer the feds wait to do something about it, you know, and in the meantime, you have state after state doing legalization measures yeah. via the ballot yeah. box, but they have less leverage every time another state mm -hmm. does this. So if California goes that way, then you've got the whole West Coast. The genie's already out of the bottle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you've got a laundry, there's a laundry list of bills that are being out there. Which one should we be watching? this time around what do you think the big Good thing um, statewide you're talking about bills in the right. legislature right. well yeah that particular ballot measure and I hope we talk about that uh, in terms of things that will be coming up in the legislative session a lot of it's going to be budget related because mm. we have a lot of agencies that have been poorly managed for decades that mm. are sailing off a fiscal cliff mm. and some folks are saying that measure 97 will be the key to solving it and it's interesting because um, on one hand, the measure itself says, oh, the money's going to go to this, this, and this, but you can't bind future legislatures. And anyone that's telling you that isn't being honest with mm -hmm. you. You're an attorney, right? So right. Right? <laughs> the attorneys in the building who do the actual drafting of the bills and laws have verified as much and said, you know, nothing in that measure, if it were to pass, 
legally binds the legislature because it's not a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. So just because they say it's going to be spent on this doesn't mean it's going to. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's another one of the untruths that's been exposed over time, um, along with many others okay. that are coming out of that campaign. Okay. So that'll be the one to watch. Okay. Well, we're going we're gonna to get this guy here. He's the wild card of the well, group at this point in time. You Jim, have to have an attorney president. There you go. You have to. Jim, you're the wild card. And I, uh -huh. and I noticed that we, we got this issue of the, the Oregonian here, and there's some real good stuff here. And it was a 28th issue at the Oregonian. Ellen Rosenbaum takes a stand against free speech. I'd like to get your comments on that piece. And where, where, where about our gentleman here, Oregon Labor Commissioner, Brad Avakin? He's running for office too, right? Yes, he is. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that. Jump right on in there. All right. Uh, some, some, a lesbian couple went to a baker and said, we want a, a wedding cake. And the baker said, I don't want to bake it for you. And that started a whole ball of wax. And, and uh, Avakian was the uh, administrative hearings officer. Uh, and he said, uh, not only are you, you, can you not deny people uh, a homosexual wedding cake, but we're going to fine you $135,000 for having, for having done so. And uh, uh, the Oregonian takes the, uh, the Department of Justice and Rosenblum to task because uh, basically what she's allowing, her, 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 the person delegating, delegated to handle this appeal is taking the position that uh, speech can be punished, uh, and, and ambiguous speech can be punished. What and, do you mean by that? Well, well, that's <laughs> yeah, a, that's I mean, a what? that's a very good point because you know I I, I happen to be doing some uh, defamation cases, yeah. and it, and the Oregon Supreme Court long ago said you cannot get punitive damages if you've been uh, uh, slandered or or libeled. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a long tradition, very strong uh, free speech. Uh, uh, the, our constitutional uh, pr provision about free speech has even been interpreted to be even stronger than the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the other thing that is at the heart of this case is the free exercise of religion, which is in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, but also the Oregon Constitution has provisions prohibiting government favoritism about uh, one religion over another. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and and frankly, secularism is has become a religion. So uh, uh, the the fact is that the, these bakers, you know, had religious, I think, bona fide religious scruples, prohibiting them from being involved in a homosexual wedding. And uh, so that's called free exercise. If they don't want to bake a cake as a part of a of a, a homosexual wedding, yeah. uh, for, because of their religious beliefs. Then they should not have been forced, or they should not be more more specifically, they they weren't forced to bake the cake because they didn't actually bake the cake, mm -hmm. but they shouldn't be punished for not baking the cake. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, where are we going to go with this piece at this point in time? Where do we go? Well, the there are several different things. The case is being handled by the courts, and courts are perhaps a little bit susceptible to public pressure. Certainly, I think the Oregonian is trying to do its best to, to you know, sway the, the court. But a vacant on the ballot for Secretary of State is the, the real and present danger. Hmm. Uh, Dennis Richardson is a Republican candidate mm -hmm. for, for uh, Secretary of State. He should have been elected the governor uh, two years ago. This is an opportunity for Oregon to... to uh, Put that man into office mm. where he, he so recently deserved. Any to be. ideas of how he responded to this issue, Dennis? Oh, I, I don't think he. I, I I haven't spoken with him or seen mm -hmm. him in writing. I've not but seen him. The, the mere fact is that he, <laughs> between Avakian and and, and yeah, Dennis Richardson, right, there's, there's right, no choice. I mean, right. uh, even the Oregonian, which is a very liberal newspaper, right. has attacked Avakian mm -hmm. uh, well, for that. his heavy-handed uh, approach in this case. That's a very interesting piece aspect of it. Now, I have also argued, for, for what it's worth, that the whole idea of having administrative law is, is unconstitutional, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. uh, only the judiciary should exercise judicial power, and all these people that are administrative law judges are part of the executive branch, mm -hmm. and they should never, ever make judicial decisions, and yet, you know, he did, and mm -hmm. shouldn't be allowed to. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was another issue that I was looking at in here. Bundy. The Bundy issue aspect of it. I mean, it's still hanging around. It's still hanging. Oh, it's coming right up. It's coming, September it's 7th is yeah. when the trial is wow. going to start. Wow, wow. And there have been a whole bunch of pre-trial motions that have been heard, and and, uh, uh, and 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 Judge Anna Brown is the, the presiding judge for the case, and mm. by and large, I think she's a very good judge, very fair judge. But I think she kind of tends to lead a little bit towards the government. But even so, 
she dismissed one of the counts against the uh, one of the counts against the Bundys, saying mm -hmm. that the, the federal government couldn't prove the case, uh, and that was a very good thing for the defense. I haven't seen that you know, you know, handled in the in the local news media. Yeah. yeah. The news media has been very anti-defendant uh, in this case, uh, and unfairly so. Uh, they have legitimate, bona fide, good arguments that are not being disseminated. Mm -hmm. And if I have a minute or two, I'd, I'd love to explain uh, briefly why they, what well, they one, did was do not- Why don't do it now? It's a very important piece here in the state of Oregon. Okay, first of all, they're being criminally prosecuted for, for civil disobedience. In other, remember, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Remember Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. They believed in civil disobedience, and uh, uh, one of the classic examples is occupying lunch counters. Mm -hmm. Remember that from the civil mm -hmm. rights movement. Mm -hmm. Well, in essence, that's what these people did. They occupied the lunch counter, the the, the, the live, wildlife refuge, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they weren't hurting anybody, but they were trying to get a message out, and that is. The federal government owns far too much of the western lands. In Oregon, the federal government claims to own 52% of Oregon's land. Hmm. Well, you go back east, they own almost none of the land in the east. Mm -hmm. But they claim that they own 52% of Oregon. They claim to own, I think it's 90% of Nevada, uh, a huge percentage of Utah. A lot of these western states, they claim to own most of the land. And... The way I read the U.S. Constitution, the way the Bundys read the U.S. Constitution is that the only things the federal government is supposed to own are forts, magazines, uh, and other needful buildings, or a couple other things, but, but it's very, very limited. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so that's part of what they're protesting is this gross uh, federal overreach and, and cl you know, claim of ownership. And one of the most disappointing things about Judge, because one of the things they, they moved to dismiss saying that uh, the federal government doesn't have jurisdiction because they don't own the land. Right. And Judge Brown ruled against them based on a, a 1931 case called United States versus Oregon, in which the ownership of the national refuge was specifically litigated between the United States of America, the government, and Oregon. But what Judge Brown didn't recognize in her decision was that that decision was binding only on the federal government and Oregon, the state of Oregon, not the people of Oregon, not private individuals the the court specifically said hmm. this ruling has no bite has no impact on private individuals and the bunnies are private individuals so hmm. the, the the mere fact that it has between the united states and the state of oregon that the united states owns the land is not it does not settle the issue because the bunnies are not the state of oregon the bunnies aren't aren't mm -hmm. the uh, united states government mm -hmm. so the judge was was i think completely wrong to to say it's been decided that the land is owned by the federal government it's only been decided vis-a-vis -vis the federal government and Oregon, not vis-a-vis -vis the Bundys and all the other people that were occupying the National Refuge. Okay. Well, you know, one, one last thing, and I know we spent time, but this is a very important piece of the state of Oregon. But, you know, one of the major concerns, there were two areas there that, that were major concerns. That one, where was the governor on this issue? And then the Second Amendment right. You know, I mean, it, it really disrupted us quite, quite a bit during those early days. Well, that's one of the other issues that, that the... Uh, 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 Ammon Bundy's attorney has raised in a pretrial uh, or, hear, or his hearing memorandum, which I, I've read is very good. Mm -hmm. He says that uh, in almost all cases, I mean, the, the statute that's being used against him has almost never been used. And, and I don't think it's ever been used this way before. Um, what typically happens is if people, you know, go on to federal land as a protest, they are civilly, they're, they're sued in, in a civil court and told, all right, get off. And then they have an opportunity to go to court and say why why they should be on their land or why they shouldn't. Be, and the government gets to argue why they shouldn't be on the land. And then a judge says, OK, either, you know, you get to stay or you get to go. You have to go. And then they're, they're They have to go. But that didn't happen here. Instead, Ju uh, Governor Brown said, Governor uh, President Obama, get those bums off the land. Mm -hmm. I mean, why didn't they go the civil route? Mm -hmm. Why did they go the criminal route? Why did they go with guns, you know, not blazing, but, well, actually guns blazing? They killed Finnicum yeah, and they, and they yeah. shot uh, Ryan Bundy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they militarized. The federal government, with the, at the instigation of Governor Brown, they, they militarized this whole thing. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they didn't uh, you know, uh, bring the pressure down. They brought the pressure up and they, yeah. they, they militarized it. Mm. So we still have hard feelings down there, big time. Well, you know, it's... It, 
who knows how this is going to play out? Yeah. Because obviously mm -hmm. the, the the sheriff of the neighbor uh, of the neighboring county, you know, he's getting under a lot of pressure, yeah. uh, and there's probably going to be a recall effort. Trying to recall him. the with the, with the, with one, one of the county commissioners. County commissioners, yeah. right? And that one that one failed, but. Uh, uh, okay. There is there there are very strong and 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 divided feelings on uh, how this thing should have played okay. out, okay. but but I think it's it's crucial that the idea that the, 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 the Governor Brown is the one that told President Obama get those bums off off the land, she shouldn't have done that. She should have let it play out, mm -hmm. and it should have been handled in a much more calm. They're, they weren't doing any damage. They weren't they weren't hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. Well. I think it just comes back to readdressing how we everything can be handled better through a policy of non-aggression. The, the state and the federal government colluded. They acted aggressively to, to get those people off. And when you avoid a civil option first, that's what we have here. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that sets the Libertarian Party apart from what we've been doing, Democrats, Republicans, for, is the, the first option for the Democrats and Republicans seems to be, you know, pull out the guns and start blazing. Whereas the libertarians believe in, in the sanctity of contract, mm -hmm. let people agree and, and and negotiate and work things out. Mm -hmm. Whereas the the power structure wants to, you know, as I say, pull out the guns and start blazing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the difference just between civil discourse, which is what we're supposed to have, and partisan nonsense. It's uh, everybody just bows up, takes their perspective, starts screaming okay. their opinion at the top of their lungs with their fingers in their ears. And and let, let, let me throw something else out on the table, which is kind of a huge, the whole issue of immigration. That's a, that's a big piece. In fact, that's how Trump pretty well got to the table initially. I know. And that whole piece. And then what, do, what do you think about it? Where are we on that particular point at this point in time? What do you think? Anybody? So uh, former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, the Libertarian nominee, was here in Portland a few months ago. I got to pick him up at the airport, take him around to some of his radio yeah. interviews and things like that. Um, and, and during one of them, he was in with Lars Larson, and, and I think the issue came up. No, he was doing a phone interview it was before we were going into Larson, but he was talking about Trump and his wall. And he said, well, okay, you know, I, I was governor of a border state there, right? So I'm kind of familiar with the issue here. He says, where are you going to put it? Are you going to put it on our side of the border? Are you going to put it on their side? Are you going to put Down it in the middle, middle of the Rio yeah. Grande? <laughs> right? So I think that's quite a contrast wow. there wow. Uh, wow. between the different policy positions of the Republican nominee and the Libertarian nominee. You know, I think I, when I think early on, when the, th that was not an issue early on, you know, from the standpoint that we, th there was a relationship between Mexico and the United States to I.e. get workers to come on this side of the deal. And, you know, back and forth, and I can still remember Chavez when I was back in my days. Uh, observing he was whatever. very much against illegal immigration. Yes, he was. Strongly oh, yes, yes. anti-immigrant. Uh, his only interest, in all due respect, was the housing aspect of it, you know what I mean? That kind of a deal. Are these people and being the treated yeah, fairly and humanely? Fairly. That's yeah. where, where he the was. Workplace and, conditions. And I, and I could mm -hmm. see that as time was going on, it, it increased the numbers, but it would be a better situation. But now, all of a sudden, you know, here we are sitting here now, we're blaming the, the illegals in many ways. But then I start thinking about, well, who signs the checks? It's called, there's a thing called E-Verify. So who's to blame? Well, I'm throwing it on the I, table. I'll, I'll tell you, Talk we got to we gotta go back to uh, unlimited abortion because okay. the reason we need people uh, to do the work is because we've been killing our babies. Yeah. You know, if we hadn't been killing our babies, we wouldn't have to have people come from across the border, mm -hmm. legally or illegally. Mm -hmm. So that's where it starts. Uh, we need to stop killing our babies, frankly. Well, Planned Parenthood was a major issue. In fact, it's a major issue in this race aspect. Well, and, and the Planned Parenthood's goal is to kill black babies. Mm -hmm. I mean, let, why, let's why tell is it the that truth. people don't get that? I mean, my part, you can just Google it in, in a story. Here's so, Margaret Sanger in her own just, words saying just this is what right I plan there, to do. But for some strange reason, the folks are just kind of like discounting it and say, hey, it's, what's the problem? You know, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll just be right up front with you as far as African Americans are concerned. We just kind of like just sit there and, and you know, just leaving the drive, if you will, to the to the Democratic Party, so to speak. And we have nothing to say. That's the best thing. That's and I'm not a Trump supporter, but the field. best thing that Trump did is he said, How, how's it working out for you? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and the fact of the matter is that, that cities like Detroit, which is bankrupt, and cities like New York yeah. or Chicago, yeah. where there's this yeah. huge yeah. homicide rate, yeah. we just... Uh, 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 the, the basketball Wade uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. lost his cousin. Uh, it was a sister. I think it was, oh. it was a sister. Wait a minute. Was, was just today. Right. The, wow. There, there, was... 
and, and uh, so why are they behold? Why do blacks feel beholden yeah. to the yeah. to the Democratic Party, which has done them nothing but wrong from the very beginning? The Ku Klux Klan was the armed, you know, the National Guard of the Democratic Party. Yeah, yeah. it was. They weren't Republicans. Yeah. Lincoln was a Republican. And that history is there, but the all due respect, and all, that, that history, and all due respect, isn't being taught in the schools. True. You know that. That's the right. The history of this country. And, and African Americans and blacks were very, very much involved in this country. And, and so that, Hugely. So it's sort of a offset at the assimilation, if you will. And there, there we sit. And so every, every time something comes around with the election aspect of it, we just kind of like, we get very much involved. We open up the doors. And at the end of the day, we're not even there. Well, and the fact is, the military was integrated before, oh, very Wood, much so. before mm -hmm. Woodrow Wilson oh, became yes. president. Yes. Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, s separated, yeah. got, got the African Americans that. out of the Navy, yeah. got them yeah. out of the yeah. Army, yeah. and, and, and for, that man should be, he should be the, 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 the top of the shame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he was uh, the, one of the worst racists we've yeah. ever had, yeah. and, and he set back uh, racial relations in this country yeah. hugely. Very much so. You know, and I, and I would say to the viewing audience, you know, this time around, this election is very, very, very important. Very, very, very important. You know, now it's not about parties. It's about the issues that are sitting on the table. You've got one vote. You can vote for anybody. It's not just voting for Republican or Democrat. You vote for the issue and the representation of those issues. So please, pay attention to what's being said. Very, very, very important. Because too often what happens, that's the whole idea of the big money for the advertising piece and the stuff that you get in the mail aspect of it. The key, you got to listen to those issues. Because in all due respect, the baby boomers that we've just gone through, these are the kids now. It's a whole gen generation of folks. They're at the table. They're going to school. They're educated. And trust me, uh, those folks who are graduating and getting spots, and by the way, it's across the spectrum. Bottom line, that we've got middle class and blacks community and, and, and Hispanic community, the whole nine yard, and right up front with you, that, and as a, but there's a large group that's not even being considered. We've got jobs that are overseas. We've got to bring those jobs back to, back to the states. I mean, we've we got problems. So, so please, pay attention. It's not just Republican, Democrats, or whatever, but I, I'm, I'm sort of impressed with Gary because, in all due respect, these folks, of the four groups, of the four groups, these folks have actually got their hands dirty. They were governors of states, and they're not involved in all these this, this backside politics and whatever. So it's very, very important. I want to make that point very, very clear with you. Okay, very important. Okay, well we got about uh, a minute, it's about two or three minutes. And let's get last comments real quick, like. I just wanted to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on, share the news about Gary Johnson and the idea of possibly electing statesmen, people who are willing to ignore what color T-shirt you showed up to the party in, and more concerned with making sure that. Everybody has a good time there, and uh, that's what this nation needs right now. Instead of sticking with one of these two candidates, just just really good at dividing us up into little groups and then setting us against each other, Gary Johnson's walking in between them saying, come on, guys, we can fix this. How can, they, how can the, the, the viewing public out here support that whole idea of the debate aspect of getting them on board? Who should they call? Who should they call? Uh, the commission when the pollster on calls, debate. they got to say Gary the Johnson. Right. The pollster, these are people yeah, that, when you pick up the phone and say, who are you going to vote for? You got just say Gary Johnson, whatever. Okay. If right. I remember right, he has a lawsuit that he'd filed. Uh, I that. believe. I'm was, not, that, was that the end? It's the lawsuit that had been filed uh, with him and Jill well, the, Stein. The last third party candidate to make yeah. debates was Perot. Perot. Mm -hmm. And he did a great job. I mean, if he hadn't imploded and pulled yeah. the plug on his own yeah. campaign, he may well have gotten elected. Uh, but he's the last one. Wow, uh, they've wow. been basically the, the same rule uh, as And applied. I was 12 back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, what about Bernie, well, what about Bernie Sanders? I mean, we've got a couple of minutes. What about Bernie Sanders? The guy, guy had momentum going. He had, he had no idea this guy was going to happen. Then all of a sudden, bang, he's gone. Well, yeah, and he carried this state overwhelmingly yes, in the yes. Democratic Party. What well, doing, well, you know what happened to him. The, Party the, politics the, the, happened. He, WikiLeaks he, made it public what happened well, He to was him. a dead man yeah. walking from the very beginning because the, the whole thing was wired against already, him. Already to begin with. Mm -hmm. Jeez. I understand he, there's a possibility of someone saying he wants to get back to the table. Have you heard anything? Oh, no. He's got, his, he's got his third home. He's paid off. He got his private jet. No, no, no. We will not hear from Bernie really? Sanders. Oh, yeah. He's been bought off. He's been oh. bought off. Come on. No, bought wow, off. Wow, wow, wow. So these I poor people out here who, who were very enthusiastic. That's how commies them. work. Yep. They yep. get bought off. Bought off. They wow. want to take our money, but they don't want to put in their own money. Jesus Christ. Boy, that's a heavy deal. He's a commie, too. Don't wow. You? Well, as you can see, folks, that's why we're going to be doing this, and we're going to be following this up, and we're going to have this kind of a group and conversation every uh, through the election. 
So please pay attention. And in fact, share this YouTube. Go right to YouTube. Go right to YouTube. You'll see the show. Give it, give it, give it about two or three days, maybe first part of the week. And then and share it. When you see it, share it with the other folks. And have those discussions. Have the discussion. When you get stuff in the mail, get together with your neighbors or family members or whatever, people who can vote. Make sure they register to get them to vote and discuss the issues. Very, very important. And then look at the Oregon Voters Digest. This is where, this is where the action is, and this is where the bottom line is all about. Again, thank you for being with us. We're going to get together, and we're going to take a short break right now, and we're going to get with the other half of our show. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Did a good job. Good job. Always good to see you. Good job. Okay. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back again, folks, to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and well, you're going to enjoy this 30 minutes because we're going to bring it home here locally here in Multnomah County, right in the area of our issues. As you can see, uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to bring these folks on, this is my immediate staff, uh, if you will. Uh, my chief of staff it has to be uh, Teresa DePay, right here, there's Teresa, and then my chief of police. As you know, you've seen Don before. We've been talking about this issue. And the reason why uh, we're, we're doing this at this point in time is because for some strange reason, we had a mayoral election, you know what I mean, talking issues. And people were trying to figure out, well, what happened? We had the issues going on. We had all these candidates and whatever. But the problem is that, you know, you know, for some strange, the new mayor doesn't come on for quite some time. Yeah. Now they're sitting there focusing on the old mayor, Charlie Hill, and, hey, the guy's trying to get his vacation in. I mean, he spent four hard years, and here they're dumping in all kinds of stuff, whether it be homeless and this and this and that. He should not, he should be given the opportunity to go on and, you know, spend a little time with his family and get prepared for vacation, you know, just do some vacation time. But here's Ted, our dear friend Ted, he's still sitting down at the, the treasurer's office aspect of it, and uh, he won't respond to his calls and that and the other. In fact, he didn't respond to us. I mean, we called him and wanted to see whether or not we could get him on the show, and sure. he didn't want to respond. And we had almost 14 to 15 people running for office. What an opportune time for him to basically call all the folks together around the table and throw these issues that are being thrown on Charlie right now, and we just have a discussion. So by the time he does meet office, he'll understand what the city of Portland is all about. Because in all due respect, I have some problems. Yeah. I'm throwing this out to you, staff, and we've got to follow <laughs> up on this piece. And I, I want you to get some comments because we're having our discussion here now. What did we do about this piece? But the fact of me is I noticed there was an announcement in the Tribune. In the Tribune this past Thursday, uh, citing the fact that he had hired, he had hired his chief of staff, the right. treasurer. So the guy's still over there, but he's paying him. And then he hired another chief of staff that's handling all of the outside stuff, mm -hmm. African American guy. I would tell you his name, but I don't know him. He's only been in town for about a year. I think he's, I think he was assistant transportation person or something of that nature. And but he's from back east, and and I'm trying to figure out, well, why would he hire someone? Uh, on that end of it, and he doesn't, in all due respect, it just doesn't fit. I mean, I, I mean, I could like the guy. I don't know him. I mean, I would have thought that if he's going to be a chief of staff to go out here and meet the people and talk to issues and this, that, and the other, he would have reached out to us so and to and maybe even know the other candidates mm -hmm. and could have had a discussion. He could have put together a discussion 
uh, in regards to whether it be homelessness and this and that and the crime and drugs and all kinds of stuff. But the fact of the matter is that didn't happen. And as you know, we got together and, and figured we need to do something about this. So I had to initiate you guys. And uh, we, we were gonna say, oh, by the way, I should mention the other guy's not being paid. Okay. Yeah, he's not being paid. Yeah, he's not being paid. He's still on Charlie's payroll, I, I think. Yeah. There's a possibility he's still on charge later. So now what we're going to do, we're going to kind of share with you what will give you sort of a little update on some of the things that we were talking about when, when we were running for office. And, and um, uh, in fact, we'll just start off with the, the homeless situation. Or uh, better yet, uh, maybe our chief. The chief, what do you think at this point in time? How, how, how do you deal? We got, we got a new chief of police now that... Uh, uh, whether or not Charlie's going to pick him, that's going to be interesting because he had an issue. Yeah. He had an issue when he got appointed. You know what I'm saying? What do you think? Well, same old, same old. Okay. I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing uh, Loretta Smith, county commissioner, now talking about opening Wapato. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? But that's neat, though. I mean, she's doing it. I mean, we, 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 In 2006, which is a while back now, right. 10 years exactly, I was talking about opening Wapato when right. I ran for sheriff of Multnomah County. On this show. On this show. Why are we still talking about opening Wapato? I mean, the homeless situation just keeps getting worse and worse and yep. worse. Frankly, I feel sorry, sorry for Wheeler coming into Portland and having to take over the horrendable, horrendous mess of homelessness that we oh, have oh, and oh. the horrendous mess that the police department is yeah, in all yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah. I don't know who he brought in to help him out, but I hope that they are not, you know, outlanders. I hope they're natives, because only a native can solve yeah. these problems. That's the concern. Don't bring, I don't yeah. bring somebody yeah. in the outside yeah. to yeah. help me. I don't yeah. need your help. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's I know the, how to fix the problem. Right. Ask right. me. Right. 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 That's right. a I'll good you. point because yeah. we need people. We have a lot of talent in Portland. Oh, big do we, time. Do we really big need time. someone yeah. big, from big out of state? Oh, gee, was, I mean, the guy could be a nice guy, but the fact we got issues here. Yeah. We've got we got issues here. And when I think about that, just like you said, we, you think about the homeless thing. And remember, we were walking those streets and talking to those folks and this, that, and the other. And to my surprise, you know, I found out that one of the main reasons why we're having problems with uh, e identifying how many we have on the streets and things of that nature and opening up uh, 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 opening up Wapato is that one, the availability was there. It's the agencies. It's all these support yeah. agencies. Yeah. There's a lot of money there. Yeah. So you're talking about closing up some doors there. Yeah. It's about the money, folks. Follow the money. Yeah. <laughs> follow the money. Remember those terms. I said, follow the money. We ran for office. We went out there and mm -hmm. tried to figure out what the issues are. And, and just like Don said, I mean, we were really on this Wapato thing. First day, yeah. in fact, Don was on there when he first, when he first ran for the, for the county chair. Hopefully he'll be, well, well we're, we're the mayor right now. We, we, we'll yeah. still have where we want to run. <laughs> this next time around but it's a very important piece but trust me it's about these agencies and even to this day i still can't get the numbers yeah well you know they 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 have the numbers but they don't want to share them because one i worked in the homeless business for six years okay i was a day shift manager of the 91 bed homeless shelter called the clark center mm -hmm. and one of the things that you learn when you get involved in homeless work that is a business mm -hmm. it's a business it's a so many people come in the door at night, you get so much money for, mm -hmm. for taking care of them. And, uh, you know, when they tell you they don't know how many there are, you know, at once a year they're required to do a, an all-night, a one-night shelter count. Mm -hmm. So once a year they know exactly how many people are in shelter. Mm -hmm. And how many are not in shelter is, is up to is what, what we see on the streets mm -hmm. and see in the tents alongside the road. Well, so they know how many people there are, but it's about the money. It's exactly like you said. Yeah. I don't know why the homeless business has been so recalcitrant about opening up Wapato. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, oh, well, it's a jail. Okay, it's a jail. What you're living in now is worse than a jail. You know, if yeah. you're living on the street in the tent, if you're sleeping on the corner, you know, my goodness, I don't understand their, their reluctance to, to embrace this. And I don't understand the reluctance of the bureaucrats that have gone on for 10 years, mm -hmm. spending $3,000 a month yeah, yeah. to keep this place open yeah. for the moths. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. Beautiful place. And, and, and the other thing that was interesting, too, and it's not, it's not in town. Yeah. See, because yeah. see that enthusiasm right. to keep this yeah. thing going yeah. Yeah. and keep those services, because the services don't want to go outside. It's out of, my point is, that why are they wanting to build a homeless camp, a tent, 
right in the middle of downtown Portland. It's pretty terrible. Something's wrong here with that yeah. picture. Pretty yeah. terrible. And you, all of a sudden, it's open up this building over here downtown, open up this building downtown. What, what, what about Wapato? Hello, it's open. You know, and then uh, maybe, or uh, if not that, why don't we take this maybe 14 or 20 acres or so and build it right on the riverfront? You yeah. know, another uh, economic boom, if you will, to make money and this, that, and the other. But it's always all downtown. You know, I, I, it's very inhumane looking at those folks sleeping on the street and drugs and needles being given to them at, at no well, extra charge. It, it, it's a, and it's a health hazard for, yes, it for, is. for regular citizens yes. who want to just go downtown to shop or work yes, yes, yes. because of the needles and the harassment. Yes. And, you know, but yeah. now, in fact, I've been going down to San Francisco. You know, you go down there, they'll tell you, well, look here, when, you, when you're getting off the plane or whatever, when you're just going in certain areas, don't touch the railings. Don't touch the railings. Watch this. I mean, people are devastating in the mm -hmm. in, in the tunnels, if you will, yeah. and things of that nature. We're getting basically some of the same thing here. They need to answer this problem. Again, we'll do the same thing. We're making the same statement. Well, We've got to pick them up off the street. The, the other thing about them. homelessness is it's such a complex issue yeah. because there are homeless families, mm -hmm. and then there are homeless people that are simply homeless because they lost their job yes. and they lost their apartment. Yes. And then you have a large portion, like the people on the Springwater Trail, who are homeless because they want to live yep. in tents so they yep. can shoot methamphetamine. Yep. Yep. They yep. don't want to be in a shelter. Yep. They want to live in tents. They mm -hmm. want to have that kind of freedom. And it's a lifestyle choice mm -hmm. for them because mm -hmm. of their addiction. Mm -hmm. So it's like homelessness is just such a multifaceted issue. It's, it's it is. complicated. It is. Do I, do I want to tell these people, any of them, no, you have to come into the shelter? Yeah. Do I want that kind of freedom taken away from me? Mm -hmm. If I'm homeless, can I not no. take my dog? Yeah, that's right. I can't yeah. have a beer after that's I get right. off that's work. Right. I'm that's working right. at a temporary job. That's right. That's I right. get paid every day. That's right. I want a beer, damn that's it. Right. That's right. That's but right. But I can't stay in the shelter. That's right. I'm going to pick a tent. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to put yep. it out yep. here, yep. and you can go to hell. Yep. Yep. Well, there's, I mean, there's good reasons for that. There's, there's for the for the for the, for the restrictions and shelters because most right. homeless people are dealing with mental illness, alcoholism, and drug addiction. So they have to have those kinds of restrictions. Restrictions, but it separates the homeless people that want to better themselves right. mm -hmm. and get inside mm -hmm. from the homeless people that just want to live in mm -hmm. tents and, and shoot methamphetamine. And, and, and you're right about mental illness. Now, you, you, the county is supposed to be, they are the one that's supposed to be providing a service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, where is the program? <laughs> I think they're well, just overwhelmed. Now that they've got now that they've got Wapato, because it was in the sheriff's office, right? Yeah. And and now the county basically owns the facility. Now, mm -hmm. got me. <laughs> and like you said, well, if Loretta Smith made the statement, well, gee, good for her. I mean, she's been having some her own problems, yeah. with, mm -hmm. if you will. And sometimes they were saying that, well, maybe someone been someone did this to her, something to that effect. But the fact of the matter is, it was raised. But when are they going to act on it? Yeah. You got about four or five different programs. Yeah. And so the only one that makes sense that, that doesn't, quote, put the homeless camp right in downtown Portland right. is Wapato. Yeah. Wapato is a huge resource, and it's yes. absolutely ridiculous the yeah. millions of yeah. dollars that have just been yeah. wasted, that yeah. have just been, uh, you know, you yeah. might as well light a yeah. match yeah. to yeah. them. Yeah because it hasn't been used. It's yep. just sitting yep. there empty. For how many years yep. is this gonna go on? I and mean, every 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 administration, you got Charlie, didn't, they hadn't done anything about it, and then you got Will. Yeah, he right. didn't even have to respond to it. Yeah. He can just sit back and relax. Yeah. And then I'm looking at this new chief of staff guy, mm -hmm. this African-American, I was like, where are you? In fact, where are you? Uh, you know, maybe we need to talk to you because in all due respect, uh, Willie has not been sworn in yet. He's really not the mayor, so we're just going to assume mm -hmm. that position. Mm -hmm. Staff, you understand where we're coming <laughs> from, right? You understand where we're coming from. It is a, is a, it's a major, major, major issue. Mm -hmm. Now, well, what about uh, well, now Reese is now going to be the new sheriff. He said he's yeah. going to run again. I mean, here's he'll another win. guy. He, yeah, he'll win, but my he'll point win. is that here's a guy, real nice guy, very mild man. I've yeah. met him a couple yeah. times or whatever. Yeah. Real nice. Why we want to get that pressure? He's making enough money on retirement. I'm sure he's he's probably pulling out about maybe a hundred thousand a year. Well, right? I, Is that fair? Close, close. I yeah. think he wants to be sheriff for a lot of complex reasons most people probably don't understand. Okay. But I think he's a really intelligent guy. Yes, he is. Right. And I trust his judgment. He's mm -hmm. very, very smart. Oh, yeah, very much so. I know that there are some people that don't like him for various reasons, but um, I think that it's a good thing that he's going to be the sheriff, mm -hmm. and I think that he'll do well. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, well, you know, I, you know the thing about him is he looks like a cop. Yes, he does. He looks the part. Clean. I mean, the you uni- know, he's the uniform the looks great. He looks he's nice and green. Slim. You know, yes, he, he does. looks really good in that green uniform. Yes, he does. I yes, yes, he does. Yes, he and, does. And after all, before he started, he was yes. a deputy sheriff before yes. he became a Portland police officer. Yes. yes. So the full circle is completed. Yes. You know, he's achieved. So he, know, he knows his route. He's he knows his achiever. territory. He, he knows his territory. He's an achiever. He yes. made it to the chief's job. Yes. Now he's his sheriff. Yes. He's the top law enforcement officer yes. in the county. Yes. Yeah. Responsible only yes. to the electors yeah. who are going to vote for him in the fall. Yeah. Right. And no, I think you can work with him, right? You, I can can, work can with you work him. with him? I can work with him. You think you well, might be able to give him a call? About, yeah. The thing about Mike yeah. Reese is he really is a consummate professional. Yeah. He's yeah. he's cool under fire. Yes. yes. He's, he's, I've never yeah. once oh, seen I, him. I, I think that was quite a move. He's, he's yeah. uh, yeah, that I was part of it. I've never once move. seen him ever even be a little impatient no. with anyone. He's just always cool. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. In fact, it was interesting. Uh, of all the chiefs that I've known just of late, if you yeah. will, I've invited them over to Norma's kitchen for a cup of coffee. Yeah. Scared. They're scared. They just can't come <laughs> over there. I mean, I mean, wow. I mean, you know, but guess who came over in uniform? Uh, Reese. Mike. Reese, did he? Oh, did he? Mike came over in uniform. That's okay, wonderful. Good for you. All the rest of them are hiding out, you know, this, that, and that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Mike came over in his uniform. Yeah. We had coffee. We had a good conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right from, and he spoke. He talks to the people, yeah. and this, yeah. that, and that. Nobody shot at him. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was in he was in Norma's kitchen. I had the globe and anchor yeah. on the bulkhead yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Marine Corps, the whole nine yards. People would come in and talk with him. In fact, he met some Hawaiians there. They had a Hawaiian <laughs> ceremony at um, at the Red Line, and mm-hmm. and all of a sudden these guys were former cops over there. Mm-hmm. He tried to recruit them. Yeah. He said, Hey, how would you like to come to Portland, Oregon? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was it just right there. Mm-hmm. I said, Mike, sure, what you sure. doing here? I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but no, well, I, I, I really, hope he does was, the right thing. Oh, I it was great. I hope he does what I would have done. Yes. I would have taken the keys to, to Wapato Jail, right. and you and I right. would have gone out and opened the door. Exactly. exactly. Just that. Exactly. It's over. No more exactly. bullshit. You can sue me about exactly. it if you don't like yes. it. Yes, looks good. But today, we're going to open the jail. And Reese has that same opportunity. Good, good. To step in and solve. Good, yes. Well, 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 Chief, well Chief, I tell you what, I mean, since we are the we are the staff <laughs> right now, I mean, we, we don't have a mayor elect right now. I get now. irritated. Why, why don't we, we, let's say, we, are, we have appointed ourselves. Yeah. We, yeah. Would you mind giving Mike a call and just see whether you might come on the show? Yeah, yeah, tell him to get on the show. See him to come on the show and, and yeah. let's, let's support him. Let's just kind of get uh, get a feel to the, the public mm-hmm. as to what he feels about being sure. sheriff and yeah. what, what he feels his role should be yeah, and what can we do to help him out. And we'd like to help him out. Last time I talked to him, he threatened to arrest me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's joking. He was. Um, he's, he's a professor at PSU too. Yes, so yes, he teaches yes, at PSU, yes. and we were we were at, at one of the classes. He was a guest speaker in a criminal, right? criminal justice class three years ago, and. Don asked him a question about concealed carry, and he made a joke. I asked him if I could carry a gun <laughs> to downtown Portland and depend on the Second Amendment to protect. You know what he me. said? He says, "I'll arrest you." <laughs> he says, "You can have your gun in one pocket and the bullets in the other." Right, right. No problem. Apparently, he feels that that's adequate for the Second Amendment. Yes, yes. I'm close enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's all rush. Good job, good okay, job. Thank you. you know, we're smiling about this, folks, but all due respect is that yeah. we got someone has to take some leadership role. Yeah, so please, man. Mike. And and so I would say again to Ted, you know, hey, I mean, we've bounced your name around or whatever, but my friend, you know, hey, you're gonna have to do something. You got to come out here. I'm inviting you again to come here on the Oregon on the Oregon Voters Digest. Trust me, Don and I are not gonna be going anywhere. We are going to be around. <laughs> and we do know what the issues are, and we do know some solutions. And you know, we the know what line. the issues yeah, are. Exactly. In fact, in fact, let's shift for a moment and talk about some of the things that you guys have been doing lately. I noticed Phil Sanford. You had named a, mm-hmm. a oh, we you. just got what together for coffee. What was um, he's got a new book coming out, and it was I you have, and who else? Who was the other gentleman? Oh, uh, JD Chandler. JD, JD, yeah, yeah, JD was here on it. He's a crime writer yes. and a good friend of ours, and and Phil is too. And we just got together the other day for coffee and to talk about writing. And his yes. new, his new book is coming out. It's a book about um, police work in the 70s. This is Phil? Yeah, Phil Stanford. Okay, good, yeah. good. And, and I'm reading his book. Oh, wow. Let's White House Call Girl, wow. which is really good. White House Call Girl. It was How published about that? in 2013, yeah. but it's fantastic. Really? I'm just really enjoying awesome. it. You know, he's quite a writer, too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, he's yeah, a good writer. Sell him short. Good writer. You know, he was with the friend. Tribune aspect yeah. of it. You know, I, I think I still remember that time he called me a gadfly yeah. when I was running against Earl Gumenauer. Yeah. That wasn't too cool. 
at that particular time. Yeah. But you know, he has a certain <laughs> knack about him. But yeah. sometimes I, I think I'm, I think I might be, because I, I do bite pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. You just slip over the radar, right? Yeah. He's, okay. he's got a great writing style. It's very, yes, it's very he's conversational. Very it's his new very book enjoyable. is called. His new book is coming out in March, and it's called Rose City Vice. Rose City Vice. And he mentions a lot of people by name. Mm-hmm. That are not going to be happy. Really? Really. He wow. mentions he mentions sure Don by name too. Mentions, really? I mean, I'm I'm totally happy with his talking about me because he's okay. portraying me honestly. Okay. okay. But there are other people other people in the book. Well, guess what, Chief? I looked at the. Guess what, Chief? You got Reese to call. Now you got to call Phil, right? And we need yeah. to do a piece. Yeah. Then let's do a let's do a show on them. No, sure. That yeah. history means he's, a lot. He's it, working it on this. It, well, the book is finished and it goes to the publishers soon. Yeah. But he's also working on a book about the Michael Frankie murder. Oh no, that's that's and what yeah. he's been Frank very Gable, passionate about that. Yeah, he piece. is. So yeah. he's got some yeah. updates on that. That kind of. Um, he's just working on a really good book, I guess, um, okay. about okay. the whole situation and um, Frank Gable being incarcerated for the last mm. thirty odd years mm. for a crime he didn't commit. Wow, you know? wow, that's heavy. Now, what so, about my friend? JD, what about JD? What is he doing? JD's working on a book with uh, JB Fisher about the traffic division in Portland mm. with regard to the Portland Police Bureau and taxis. I'm not really sure what the title is yet. It's, mm. It will be published through the History taxis? Press. Taxis, taxis, yeah. and the traffic division. Anything to do with Yuba? I, no, <laughs> no, like in the you know the. 40s, 50s, 60s, really? around that time. Yeah, it okay, has to JD. be kind of historical. Okay. But okay. he's doing that with JB Fisher, okay. and um, okay. he's um, the taxi business. <coughs> the okay. taxi business okay. started okay. in Portland, okay. which fairly corrupt, and okay. mm-hmm. cool. Cool. was involved in a lot of good. "I'll pick you up and good. rob you." Good, good. good. And and, and also, it, it, it the book will detail the traffic division with the Portland Police Bureau and how that kind of evolved in the 30s and the 40s okay. when people more pedestrians kept getting okay. killed okay. so it's it's kind of it's it, mm-hmm. i think it's going to be a fantastic book about the evolution of mm-hmm. um traffic laws okay. and cool. things cool. like that well i tell you what uh, you, you've got an assignment stafford <laughs> and Teresa, you, you, you'll contact both of those individuals i'll try and maybe get 30 <laughs> minutes each right okay. for each one of them sure. would you mind interviewing them there I, absolutely well, good. i'll try we'll, yeah we'll interview them i'll speak of it and don and i we're going to just got, get together with uh, with reese mike right i'd love and to then maybe and get yeah. together with the new chief of police and yeah. and give them some plug because in all respect I realize the guy had some job. issues. It's gonna be some issues with with, with um <coughs> really anyway with him mm-hmm. because I didn't see his name from the standpoint of endorsing him as far mm-hmm. as I'm concerned. Yeah. See? I mean why why put all of that stuff up? There's been a lot of publicity mm-hmm. on that whole piece and now he's the new chief and Ted hasn't said anything. So what well, so my point is that hey, he's a chief, yeah. and so we got now we got Reese and, chief. and and he, we got we yeah. Got Reese, Ted Wheeler, then. Ted Wheeler's gonna have to um, be very careful how he, um, he relate, relates to the police chief yep. and to the police department. He's gonna have to be careful. He's yep. gonna have to be cooperative, yep. and he's gonna have to learn yep. um, because the reality is he doesn't have a background in yeah. law no, enforcement. No, he doesn't. And the union supported yeah. the new chief. Yeah. Right, the union supported they, the new okay. chief, yeah. and those guys have already geared up, you know, from yeah. the standpoint of trying to figure out what about the attrition, all of the, all of the guys who are retiring and this, that, and the other, and, and you know, and then understand the gang enforcement team. I mean, mm-hmm. they've kind of, mm-hmm. he's got some new ideas from the standpoint of saying disbanding this and just making them all police. That's what yeah. I was kind of getting a feel for where he was coming from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got me, and I think that's important because I, well, I think we need to start something fresh, and new, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. would be a good deal. So we'd like to have the, the chief here too. For, I feel sorry for anybody coming. In trying to take over oh. this 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 city oh. in this particular mess. Portland is Portland the, is worse mess. now oh, than yeah. any oh, yeah. time oh, I yeah. can mm-hmm. remember. The oh, homelessness yeah. issue yeah. Uh, is terrible. Oh, it's, I've never terrible, seen it so bad. Terrible. So yeah. Don, we, we got quite a job. Uh, this we do. Here. We got quite a job. I mean, I I, I hope you understand. I, I mean, do. I'm up you, for it. Uh, you are up, sir. Yeah. And since we are on a voluntary base aspect yeah. of it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And we are we are the the really the employers, right? You agree? We are the employers because we are the voters. Right, yeah. we're the taxpayer, right? Yeah, and they work for us. That's right. And mm-hmm. so I would hope that Ted would come on, and take his position, and go on and just expedite, if you will, uh, his his swearing in ceremony. Mm-hmm. But right now he's not the mayor, you know. Yeah. But he needs to be here. We got some problems here. Mm-hmm. He needs to get down to the table, and we'll be here to help. But how, is, how is this new man gonna dovetail with the existing police culture? Well, he that's, can't even dovetail with you and me. How is he going to... That's, that's the thing. How are you going to interface I, I mean, with this yeah, culture? Yeah. Has he, you know, it's tough. Pick up yourself a book. Yeah, please. It's right ready. You can pick one up there. Behind the Bears in River City. That's to the new new staff person. Yeah. 
It's it's a period piece. This is the second edition, yeah. but the book actually um, shares a lot of information about yeah. police culture, which is really essentially timeless. In Portland, Oregon, some right. of the people police yeah. culture Portland. in Portland, Oregon, in some Portland, of the Oregon. people that remain unnamed yeah. in this book yeah. will be named in, the, in Rose City Vice. Yes. Oh, really? By Phil really? Stanford. Well, oh, one, one person that we know of and well, some other people. Some people oh, really? Good, good, good. Named. We had good. nothing to do with it. Good, good, and, you know, good. And good. And good for good, you. Good, good. Maybe you can, maybe you can regurgitate the possum incident downtown. Yeah. I know yeah. this guy named Bruce. Bruce yeah. What? Bruce. Who's that guy? I don't know who that guy was. <laughs> See, I, I, that's, a, that's a whole new day. <laughs> but if, shoot, I'd like to get that on the table, you know what I mean, from the standpoint yeah. of how that came about. Because it's all about and my, my good friend Peter. Remember Stan? I do. Awesome guy. I mean, that he's a former Marine type. You know, I, I don't know why I'm so partial to him. Oh, Marines, but, but the fact of the matter is, <laughs> so we got quite a job. We got a few more minutes and whatever. But any any last thing? No, we got about five, about two minutes or whatever. Anything on the? What do you think about the campaign? The, the, the national, the national campaign. You got? What do you think about this? This whole idea of the debates Disgusting. that's coming up. We well, need to I have pointless. You know, it's going to be something. Pointless. I'm thinking about the idea of getting these other two people on because you got a female yeah. in the Green Party and you got these. We need to have everybody or I'm not at the watching. Table. Right. You see what I'm saying? You got me. I want to see Jill Stein. I want to yes. see Bernie. Yes. I want to see yes. these, yes. these yes. guys yes. from the Independent Party. Yes. I yes. want to see everybody I, up there. My feeling is that it's it's yeah. still just going to be a two party race. Yeah. It's just, you yeah. know, it's either yeah. going to be Trump or it's going to be Hillary. Yeah. And I yeah. hate to say wow. because I don't like either of them, right. but. If I had to vote, yeah, yeah. I'd vote for no, Hillary over, that. over Trump, and I yeah. and I hate them both. <laughs> mm, gee, gee. But it's like, if I have which to vote evil for one is, of the you know. one of the two lesser of two evils? I, yeah. won't, I won't vote. But you know, the, the thing that bothers me about yeah. it is that we can't be um, president of the United States and at the same time. Uh, be responsible for Portland. You see yeah, yeah. Yeah. We got a yeah. job right here. In all due yeah, respect, we, do. we got Oregon job, and we got we have a beautiful city. Yeah. And it's getting ready. To, we, we're losing it, and we it, got it. It is so stop. different now. Oh, I mean, oh, gosh, every time oh. we drive through the city, I mean, the tents are everywhere. Oh. oh. It's just a blight. Oh. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Know? It's a crazy deal. The yeah. obvious, the obvious answer is we need more street. And this right. gentrification piece, nobody's saying anything. This <laughs> gentrification piece of the blacks, yeah. and the, like, they can't mm -hmm. say anything. Nobody's saying nothing. Yeah. Not a thing. So my point is that we got problems. We got yeah. apathy. So that's why they need us, Don. Teresa. <laughs> I know. They need us. So you'll be chairing. You'll be sitting in this chair as time no goes and interviewing folks. So please no get in touch with Reese and uh, Portland Police and, and the yeah. sheriff, right? Yeah. And you're going to get the uh, stand from those uh, guys. I'll try. And we'll sit somewhere else. <laughs> I know that JD will be will be happy to come okay. on. Phil might be busy because he's really, really busy. That's okay. He's cool. We'll push the book. <laughs> You understand? Okay. We'll push the book. Right. Okay, good. Well, folks, this has been it. Uh, we've given you an hour of, I think, of information, and I would suggest very strongly get together with your neighbor. Read that material. Remember that. Read that material. You got to vote. It's not so just, you can vote for anybody. In fact, you can even vote for yourself if you'd like to. But the fact of the matter is, we got some serious time. So really study the deal and call these elected officials that you're communicating with and get the job done. Okay? Remember, Thank you very much. See you next week. A month. That's right. Now get to schools next time around. So get. Feel. Okay, Paul Anthony will be here from Portland Public School. Take care. Have a good one, folks. I think that's it. Have a good one.